Hi, I'm Ken Hauer, president of the Rubicon Trail Foundation. This video series is called The History of the Trail and how did that spot get its name? Because some are pretty obvious like V-notch and some are not so obvious like whale bones. So let's get out there and let's get started. <laughs> Hey, so part of our history of the Rubicon and well, how did this spot get its name, we are at the famous Gatekeeper. Now, a lot of people know the name of that one, so it's not a big uh, mystery on that one. But I'm here today with John Arns to talk about uh, the history and kind of how it's got its name. So how, uh, how did this road even get here where we are? Because we're not actually on the original Rubicon Trail, are we? That's correct. We're not on the original Rubicon Trail, Ken. This is known as the... Loon Lake Inner Tie or the Inner Tie. And although it's now the most popular entrance to the Rubicon Trail, it really didn't exist as an entrance to the Rubicon Trail until the 70s. And I'm not even sure exactly when in the 70s. I've talked to a lot of old timers and I've heard anything from 72 to 76 when this be became popular and people started using it on an ongoing basis to enter the trail. Previous to this, the trail came in at Airport Flat through Wentworth Springs. And that is the original uh, county part of the trail. That's the original county claimed public road. Exactly. So when you get to Gatekeeper, uh, there's a lot of rocks here. So what's the history of this section of the trail? Because it's kind of got a little semi-notorious past. It does, it has a nefarious past. All right, there's a lot of old timers that are watching this that are going, probably their blood's boiling now, but what's done is done. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's talk about what happened. So what happened was, this section of the trail tends to have a little water on it in the spring and it, because of mechanical action in the tires, the, uh, the uh, trail surface can get eroded by, by rigs going through. And this happens in a lot of areas in the trail and this is just one of them. But it became the focus of the Forest Service and it became the focus of the county and they were concerned about it and their thought process was, well, let's reduce the rock size in Gatekeeper. And if we reduce the rock size, we will make it a little easier to get through and there'll be a lot less erosion. The problem with that is the part where it's a little easier to get through. Correct. Because <laughs> no one likes that. We want this to be what it is. We it's, don't want it's it to- It's got the name Gatekeeper for a reason. It's got the name Gatekeeper for a reason. It keeps people who shouldn't be on the Rubicon out of the Rubicon. Have you ever seen anybody see it and turn around? more than a dozen times. Exactly, I've seen it many, many times. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing to see the look of, oh boy, yeah. what have I done? Yeah, oh boy, this is not where I need to be. <laughs> right. So, so the Forest Service and the county in 2006 decided the way, to, the way to solve this problem, this erosion problem here, was to reduce the rock size and gatekeeper and they hired a, uh, or they got a dynamite guy from the forest and they came out here and they closed off the trail on an off day in November and they um, exploded the rocks in, in the trail and the trail became easy for a time. For a time. For a time. But mother nature takes back and now look at it, it's hard again. <laughs> mother so, nature gives and takes for so, sure. So what we learned and when I say we, I think the county learned it, the forests learned it, and we, we as trail users who were involved in that process back then learned was it's always better to add rock to the trail than to take it away. If you take rocks away from the trail, you'll just cause that section of trail to be incised or cut down, and you'll have actually cause more erosion. Now we happen to be standing uh, less than 10 feet away from a rock that was added to the trail and it's easy to tell because it has what? It has a hole drilled in the middle of it. <laughs> a hole drilled. So how does a hole, dr John, get drilled in a rock? How's so, that work? So the reason the holes are drilled in the rock is because in the 1950s when they built Loon Lake Dam, they cut a bunch of tunnels and when they cut tunnels, they dynamited those tunnels out. In order to dynamite tunnels in granite, they had to drill holes in them and pack the dynamite in there. So they blew up pieces of granite for Loon Lake Dam. They gathered that in dump trucks and took it to a place called the Gurley Adit. The Gurley Adit is down by Rob's Powerhouse. Fast forward to today, when the county or volunteers work on the trail, the rock has to come from somewhere and where it comes from is the Gurley Adit. So the rock that came out of Loon Lake, 
when they d built the dam is now on the trail and that's why you see holes in the rocks on the trail. It's a, it's a interesting sight when you do see it, but that's part of the history of the Rubicon and that's what makes the Rubicon such a neat place to visit. Um, I don't have anything else. Uh, it, giving you tips and tricks on how to drive through the gig keeper. You know what? The rocks move around. It doesn't look anything like it did before it was blown up. Or rocks were... Rock size was reduced. That's I, what we like to say. <laughs> yeah, of course it was blown up. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like it did before the rock size was reduced. And it doesn't look anything like it did afterwards. It changes all the time. It's much harder than it is, than it, it's much harder now than it was uh, shortly after uh, those rock sizes were reduced. That's correct. So uh, you can't count on it being the same thing. So, and uh, coincidentally, right over here, we have a user who just came to the Rubicon for the first time. So let's talk to Sean. Sean's right over there waiting to get interviewed. Okay, so uh, we're talking about the history of the gatekeeper and today we have Sean, who is a first time Rubicon user. Is that yeah, uh, accurate? Yeah. Sure. Yep, and you're here with your uh, Bronco, and you're just here with your uh, your son is over there watching son. from distance. Okay, awesome. Taken out for a little spin, and you just went through Gatekeeper for your first time. Yep. Tell me about your experience in Gatekeeper, Sean. You know, it was a uh, good good experience. A little rear diff drag here and there, but I think it was a uh, it was good. But doesn't it, it give you give you an indication like what you're in for? If you oh, yeah 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 it definitely gives me kind of an idea of what, exactly. what's ahead. Exactly. If you figure if you can't make it through this, it's only going to get worse. So I better start making my decisions now. Oh, yeah. What I'm going to do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, so uh, now that you've uh, been on a little portion of the Rubicon, did you consider Gatekeeper easy, medium, or difficult? Uh, I'd say it's moderate. Yeah. Yeah. That's Enough for somebody to make a decision on what they want to do for the rest, whether they're going to go through with their uh, mall crawler or. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> uh, it, it'll give you an idea of whether to continue or not. Excellent. I mean, if you're willing to sacrifice, you know, I think pieces it makes, of your vehicle. Exactly. <laughs> I think it does a really good job of doing that personally. I've seen a lot of people turn around before they even started to go into it, but uh, um, you went through it and turned around and came back because yeah. you're on a little jaunt for the day. So you took your uh, Bronco out. So tell us about your Bronco. So it's a 2021 um, 6 Gen mm -hmm. Badlands Sasquatch. Um, I have a Ebok coil lift on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the biggest thing I realize I need to do now is I just need a little bit more lift. Yeah. Um, this is a daily driver though, so, and it's actually my wife's Bronco. Every guy wishes he had a little just bit more lift. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so far it's been great. Um, yeah, the, the biggest probably next thing we'll do is maybe, maybe full coil. Over. Great. That's what I was just going to ask you. What are you going to do next? Because there's always a next. Yeah. Coil, coil overs. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> So uh, you got uh, 35s on there now. Yep. Yep. Uh, are you going to stick with 35s? I'm going to stay with 35s. So okay. I, I, I'm for now. I don't think it's. Um, I'm not willing to sacrifice my steering rack and you know tie rods are one thing, easy to replace, but racks are expensive. And Did you bring any spare tie rods? I don't. I don't. That's <laughs> another reason why we turned around right, right here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So to be fair, we were shooting the rest of the video and uh, Sean came on through and now came on back. So uh, he was in no danger of uh, getting stranded. Trust me. Yeah. So uh, awesome. So you're on 35s. What do you think about doing the Rubicon on 33s in your Bronco? I, How would you feel about that? I think you, you better have, you know, good protection and be prepared to drag and scrape and bang and you know did you take your license plate off by chance i didn't awesome I that's didn't. a good yeah, it's that's a there. great start yeah, yeah it's still excellent there. well thanks for coming all right so uh, go check the link in the bio to our youtube channel don't forget to like subscribe and comment and what should we do sean let's go wheeling awesome Don't let me forget that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Right? Okay. How did you like the six gen Badlands on Sasquatch on the trailer? Sure. I don't know. You know, I, don't I, also, know. I also want you to ask him. You've been wheeling before. Do you like long walks on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want me to ask him, John? <laughs> what was the other question? Ask him about. Uh, no, I don't want to ask him. 17% battery in the GoPro. Okay, you're both in shot on the GoPro. The vertical. I'm gonna want. You're a little bit out. But I'm gonna one shot this. Shit. Yeah. Cool. You think? You, you, you better bring your A game. Got <laughs> a ton of education videos we'll be posting on there.
then have him say, what, what were we saying? Let's go wheeling. Let's go wheeling. And then walk off. That's, that's your line. That's my, let's go that's my line. Yeah. Let's go wheeling. Fucking right. confused. Sorry. It's confusing. Yeah. Ear muffs. No, it's a walk. <laughs> <laughs> I love old school. Ear muffs.